Welcome to Kung Fu Podcast. This is Sifu T.W. Smith. I have put together a little extra, a little video timeline, if you will, of Jung Byun In and a Kung Fu connection. Kung Fu Podcast is all about exploring the culture, the adventure, and the impact of martial arts. So if we're going to be exploring Jung Byun In and a Kung Fu connection, what are we going to be looking for? Yun had told his karate instructor that he had learned Chuan Fa, or a.k.a. Kung Fu. And no one knows specifically which style or type he had learned, but if we were going to develop a hypothesis, you know, take an educated guess at it, where would we start? And sometimes the best way to find out what may have happened is to look at probably what didn't happen. So can we find a connection between a Kung Fu man, Aikido founder Marihei Uishima, and Chang Mu Kwan founder Yung Byun In? It was implied that Uishima had learned Bakwa while he was in China, and that had influenced his development of the Aikido system. Several historians disagree that this would have ever happened. And if you look at the accounts, especially some of the details of those accounts, of uh, Uishima's time spent in China, you'd probably agree. If you'd like to read a very thorough account of that, you can go to blogaikidojournal.com and look at Mr. Stanley Prannan's essay there. In 1904, 20-year-old Uishima was in the infantry in the Dalian region. Now, this area of Dalian and Manchuria is going to be where the majority of this story is going to take place. Dalian, you can see down there at the bottom tip there, uh, is pretty much a pipeline up to Xinjiang, then up to Changchun. And as this next image will display, this time was not the place where you wanted to take your vacation. There was a lot of battles going on in 1904 and 1905 in that area. If you were an infantry man in the army, you were not going to be taking a lot of time off to go learn new kung fu. Well, in 1909, Imperial Japan invaded Korea, and Grandfather Yun was pushed out of his government position. To avoid any trouble with the Japanese forces, he took his family up to Manchuria. Yun was born in 1920, and he grew up in Changchun. During the 1920s, the Supreme Manchurian ruler, warlord Zhang Zhao Lin, was busy in Changchun in the Xinjiang region. The South Manchurian Railway connected all of them. In 1922, Gong Bantian, a skilled Bakwa man in the area, was noticed by warlord Zhang Zhao Lin, and Zhang offered him a bodyguard position. So we go up a couple more years to 1924 where Marihei Uishima was in China again. But this time, he was trying to get a religious figure into Mongolia, but it didn't go so well. He ended up getting arrested, while Yun, at the same age, 1924, he was just four, four and a half years old, he was preparing to go to elementary school. Well, according to Yun's second cousin, during his elementary school years, young Yun learned Chun Fa under a Mongolian instructor. Most Chun Fa instructors in that time and in that area were Mongolian. He also described Master Yun as being very bright, sincere, quiet, always helping people, and basically like a typical martial artist. Isn't that, isn't that a good thing? That's what we all need to be. Master Yun continued his studies of Chun Fa through elementary and middle school ages. In 1938, Yun, while he was in Tokyo, was studying veterinarian medicine. He had a little incident, and he continued his karate. He had learned a little bit of karate, and he continued it with the teacher there named Kanken Toyoma. His martial arts influence was really going to start taking shape. Now, in the incident I just mentioned, they said that Yun handled his attackers, attackers by being deflective and evasive. Now, when he was asked about the techniques and things along those lines, he pretty much credited his Chun Fa training. Now, the Mongolian Chun Fa of the time, the most popular of all, was Mongolian wrestling. But deflective and evasive was not the description. You see these guys here? Do they look evasive? No, they're more like, I'm going to get in your face and take your lunch. So, there was another option here. Yin Fu was famous for his evasive footwork. Yin Fu had taught Bakwa to Gong Bao Tian, who was in the same area nearly the same time. 
So my hypothesis, if I was going to take an educated guess, was is that they had implied Uishima had learned Bakwa while he was in China. Though that was mostly unlikely, Bakwa must have been present in the area at the time for, they, for them to assume that he may have learned it. There was a skilled Bakwa man there, Gong Ban Tian, and he was working and teaching uh, Bakwa at the time. He was actually offered a job, remember? Uh, Yun was described as being deflective and evasive, two skills that are hammered into you when you become a Bakwa practitioner. So if I had to take this educated guess on Chun Fa's uh, of Yun, I would lean toward Bakwa and not toward the Mongolian wrestling. So before you write me and tell me how off base I am, I'm going to ask you of two simple things. First, remember the definition of a hypothesis or an educated guess. And please present me your research and your hypothesis. You can send me all that at kungfupodcast.com forward slash contact. I'd love to have it. There's a list of resources that I pulled uh, some. Actually, that's not all of them, but that's at least the top five or six. And you can listen to the whole podcast uh, for that particular episode at kungfupodcast.com forward slash 72. I hope you have a great time, get out there to practice, and I look forward to talking with you again real soon.